Hey yo, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens, it's Omni Dog here on Omni Dogs Vault. And we're taking uh, a look at a guide on how to build your collected editions collection. This is the DC part, how to build it. How would you start uh, if you had, say, just a few collected editions? How would you start? building if you just had uh if you wanted to center it around dc and marvel i already did the marvel part now we'll concentrate on the dc part um and i guess we can start with the the big three of dc and that would be superman batman and wonder woman and then go from there um i would say that um what i would do is as I close out my mail so it doesn't make an annoying noise I think if I started with Batman I would probably completely skip the Silver Age um, now you can go let's see where is my collection of his okay now I just happen to have the complete Frank Miller in a like a fake leather, oh, genuine bonded leather. Wow. Um, a complete Frank Miller Batman, and this has the Dark Knight Returns. Now you can you can read that. Um it it makes more impact the Dark Knight Returns if you know how goofy Silver Age Batman was. And um it's really uh, I, I understand how important it was because I lived through the Silver Age in the 60s and, you know, the, the 70s, um, the Bronze Age Batman. He wasn't as goofy. He took a more serious turn under Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams. Um, so I understand just how big of a deal Dark Knight Returns is and how important it is to your collection because... Um, this changed comics and it changed Batman for good when it came out in, I think it was 1985. This uh, made Batman um, a, a lot more of a tough guy, kind of a cross between Clint Eastwood at the time and um, maybe almost like what the Punisher would become. Uh, he was out for vengeance and he was he wasn't taken any crap from anybody who was an old man coming out of retirement and drawn by Frank Miller as conceived by Frank Miller and uh, the world was crumbling around him and um, he this was a remarkable book and every collection should have it um, and I'll talk about another book that came out right around the same time as soon as I'm done with Batman uh, but that's The Dark Knight Returns, and you can get that in almost any form you want. Uh, they perpetually reprint it. Paperback is fine. Um, I think the Absolute, is, which is DC's, DC prints things in mostly Absolute form, which I'll get to in a minute. They do have some omnibuses that come out, uh, but they mostly reprint things in Absolute, uh, mostly print things in Absolute form, not that much in... Uh, uh, omnibus form although the omnibus of this run that's coming out of Batman would be a good thing to build a collection around and that is Scott Snyder's run the new 52 run of Batman this you need no Batman knowledge other than Batman exists because this is a fantastic Batman run that you can just get dropped right into the middle and just be excited about it, as excited as heck about it. Greg Capullo art is fantastic. It starts a new concept, the Court of Owls, and a new character, Talon. Um, it goes on for 50, 52 issues, somewhere around there. Um, and they are bringing out uh, what I think will bring be one or two... Uh, two omnibuses, omnis, uh, of this, and that would be brilliant for your collection to have Scott Snyder's Batman run 
in your collection. You don't have to have any prior knowledge about Batman. Uh, all you need to know is the Joker is his main villain and um, the Court of Owls was brand new to all of us. And so you don't need to have any connection uh, any introduction, it'll be your first introduction like it was to all of us. Uh, it was a brand new thing and it was remarkable and Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo utterly knock it out of the park with this book and it would be, you'd be very happy to get that when it comes out this year in the omnibus format. This year's 2019 by the way. Uh, so when it comes out in omnibus format, uh, it's also available in standard hardcover or uh, paperback if you'd rather get it that way but you'd you'd be really happy to have that in your collection uh, another couple Batman options Batman by Tom King that was new 52 which came out around the late 2000s um, rebirth came out a few years ago and this is Tom King let's see exactly when this came out this came out in 2017 uh, 2016, 2017, this is Tom King's Batman, which is amazing. Gets off to a little slow start as it introduces Gotham and Gotham Girl in this, which was kind of an interesting concept and kind of not. But slow Tom King is still interesting Tom King. And after this, it really gets going and gets going in a remarkable way remarkable way uh, especially with the romance between Batman and Catwoman which is handled incredibly and uh, Tom King does a great job with Batman all the way through and is great and this is Rebirth Batman um, and it uh, Tom King does a fabulous job on Batman really really great and you don't need to, you can start right out of the gate with this too. You can build your, help introduce this into your collection with no prior knowledge, really, of uh, Batman. Uh, let, let me see, I don't want to get to this Batman just yet. Uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Where is the other Batman? I wanted to get to... Um, Okay, it's not coming to me right now. Well, so we'll get to this Batman. Um, an omnibus is coming out of this eventually. It got canceled, but I believe it got resolicited, and I think it's going to come out sometime next year. Um, and that is Absolute Hush. Um, I love the story of Hush. I was uh, the artwork is fantastic. I was surprised. It's uh, all Jim Lee artwork, which is <laughs> amazing. Um, the story is really well done. I think it is. Um, I had I found it to be surprising, and kept the story um, kept me guessing, and was I thought um, it flowed really well, and I was surprised at a lot of things in it. It was a, a new story that I had never heard before. Um, and this was actually my first absolute ever. So I enjoyed this book a lot. You don't need any previous knowledge on Batman to enjoy this. Um, this is my first absolute that I got a long, long time ago. So I think that you will uh, enjoy this a lot. Hush is coming out in Omnibus. I think it's still in print as uh, an absolute look at how long ago I got this fifty dollars for an absolute um, but e either way you can get hush I think it's still available in trades it's a fun book I really enjoyed it it's a very fun read and I think you'll dig it too and let's see I think that where is the one book I was looking for okay you're you're gonna hide on me so you're not gonna get talked about Okay, so that leads us to Superman. Um, it's funny, there's not a lot of Omnis on Superman or Batman. There are a couple on Wonder Woman, but DC really just doesn't have... Uh, DC has the death and return of Superman, but I don't think that's necessary for your collection just yet, if you're just starting out. 
Uh, they have the 52 Omnibus, DC 1 Million, Infinite Crisis. Those are not good things to start with. Then they have all the Golden Age, Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman. But I don't think those are good things to build a collection around uh, if you're just starting out. So there's not a lot of Silver Age or Bronze Age or Modern Age Superman or Batman Omnis. So we're going to have to go with uh, Absolutes and single deluxe editions of Superman and Batman, which is what I just showed you for Batman. Um, so we're going to go with um, some Superman stories, sing single Superman stories, and uh, some Rebirth, and I'll talk about New 52. Now, New 52, I don't have it handy. Um, I don't know why I don't have it handy, because I did collect it, but Action is a, uh, New 52 is something that Grant Morrison uh, did some good stuff with. Um, I, I, I enjoyed it. He took a depowered Superman and got him um, gaining his powers as he got used to the sun and uh, got used to gaining his powers from the sun and gave him like jeans and a t-shirt for an outfit and i thought grant morrison did a good job with that so the new 52 action comics uh is a good place to start for that um i didn't care as much for the superman new 52 um now this is older this is going back to the late 2000s now rebirth i did a whole video if you care to look for it on how to read DC's Rebirth. This was a couple of years ago when Rebirth came out. Um, and it's the flip of New 52. I like Superman and not action so much. Um, and to understand Superman is a little tricky, but I'll give it a shot here. You have to read the final days of Superman book from New 52, you have to read Road to Rebirth, Superman, Lois, and Clark. Just read those two books and you will understand perfectly Superman Rebirth. And it's worth it because turns out they've got a super son, Lois and Clark do. They're married, they have a super son, and it's a lot of fun. Lois and Clark make a great couple. They're married. They have a super son named John. And it's really a good comic book. To, but you do need to have a little background. That's The Final Days of Superman from New 52. And Superman, Lois, and Clark will lead you right into Superman Book 1 from Rebirth. Worthwhile. And that is that for that collected edition and then we get into some single ed editions that are fun uh one of the great stories all-star superman by grant morrison and art by frank quietly uh in this it's a bit of an elseworlds tale superman finds out he's got sun poisoning he's had too much exposure to the sun and it concentrates on his final days Brilliantly written, brought me to tears, brilliantly drawn, truly amazing. I read this book probably every six months, and I am moved emotionally every time I write it. This is one of Grant Morrison's more accessible books, and it is amazing. You don't need to know anything about Superman to love All-Star Superman. It is one of Grant Morrison's greatest achievements, I think. So definitely check out All-Star Superman. You don't have to get it in absolute format. I think you'd like it in absolute format because the artwork's so great, but you can get it in a trade paperback or a deluxe hardcover and save the money, and you'd be just as happy, I'm sure. This would be a good addition to your collection. Um, if you do have some working knowledge of the Silver Age of Superman, 
Uh, a very fun and interesting book that always makes me cry is Alan Moore's and Kurt Swan's Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. This is how they wrapped up in the 80s all the Silver Age funniness and silliness that was known as Superman in the Silver Age with characters like Bizarro and Lana Lang, Insect Queen, and uh, Jimmy Olsen, um, whatever iteration, Elastalad he was. And um, it, it was, it, they took all the 60s characters and basically uh, sort of killed them off. Brainiac was involved. Um, Metallo, Krypton Man, all these uh, various creatures were involved. And there's uh, Superman calling me right now to make sure that I'm telling you the right information. Uh, Crypto was involved, and the Legion of Superheroes were involved, and it is a great, fun book. Uh, this has the Alan Moore stories. This has some more Alan Moore stories uh, involving Superman, Superman and Swamp Thing, Superman and... Um, Batman and Wonder Woman. There are several Alan Moore stories in here that this is extremely worthwhile and really good. So I would highly recommend that you read um, Alan Moore's Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. And um, so I'm going to take a second and text my wife and see if everything's okay because every thing okay she doesn't know I'm in the middle of a video so this is the kind of real life moment that you guys pay for oh okay everything's fine she's fine I'll just put doing a video and you're the highlight okay good there you go. There's a little look into the Bragg family dynamic. We put the fun in dysfunctional. Okay, so let's finish up with some more Superman books. Um, uh, some A book that everybody loves, Superman for All Seasons, Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Uh, this is... Um, a story more about Clark Kent, really, um, sort of coming to terms with uh, his um, his powers. Um, it's really a good book. Um, I don't I don't know if this is available in. Um, it it deals with spring, summer, uh, fall, and winter. And I, it's a, a touching, wonderful story. I think it's Jeff Loeb's best story ever. Um, it is, and of course, I'm not a big fan of Tim Sale's, the way he draws Superman. He's just over-muscled and kind of goofy. But lots of people love him. Um, really get this for the story because this is... Um, Really remarkable story. I just can't. Everybody, everybody loves this story, and I can't blame them. I love them too. Um, I don't know if this is available in absolute form, but it is available in deluxe form, and that's good enough for me. You, you would can have this in your collection, and you will love it. Um, you will love it a lot. Uh, another book that is great is um now wait a minute i know i'm missing a book here i know i'm not mentioning a book that somebody is going to call me out on for not having in here well maybe i've got it maybe it's this one superman birthright this is great by mark wade the origin of the Man of Steel. It retells his origin. Um, and you think you know his origin, but this is a retelling of it. And it's done in a really sharp, clean, clear, fun, interesting way. Um, you need this book uh, in your 
um, collection because this is a classic retelling of um, the Superman mythos and how Clark Kent became Superman. It is Mark Wade at his finest, and I love Mark Wade. And when I say it's at his finest, I mean it. It is at his finest. So, Superman Birthright is marvelous. And I know I'm missing a Superman book. Somebody's going to call me out on not having it out. I bet it's the Kurt Busiek book, and I'm and I'm dropping the ball on it. Well, you're gonna have to have to name it in the comments. I know I I just I'm just not remembering it, but somebody will tell me in the in the comments, and you guys can look in the comments. It's the Kurt Busiek book, and I can't think of the name of it. Huh. Here's a great Superman book that's really about Clark Kent, and it's by Max Landis, by di various different artists, and it's um, it's really a Clark Kent book, but it tells the story of him starting out as a young lad, maturing into a grown-up, all dealing with him as is, as he grows into his powers this book is great you don't need to know a thing about superman except that he's clark kent and it's clark kent dealing with his powers as he grows up with various guest artists doesn't interrupt the flow at all it makes it very interesting and it makes it very fun and uh very very good uh, excellent read this is one of my top books of the year when it came out and I loved it. And it's got, um, it's just top notch. And I love the whole book. And I think you will too. You wouldn't mind building um, your whole collection around uh, Superman with this one book in there. Uh, because it's the adventures of Clark Kent. And it's really great. That's American Alien. And as it says on the back, this is not a Superman comic. So in this part one, which is turning into part one, we'll talk about Wonder Woman. At the last thing we'll talk about is Wonder Woman. There are two books that I think you can focus on for Wonder Woman, for a great Wonder Woman experience. Um, I think uh, the best writer for Wonder Woman is, quite frankly, Greg Rucka. He uh, had hard to find books that Fortunately, got uh, reprinted. That's volume one and two of Wonder Woman by Greg Rucka. And volume one contains the hard to find, the Hikatea, where she makes a promise to a woman who's getting chased by Batman and she has a face off with Batman uh, as she's uh, the, the, in the embassy um, uh, for... Um, uh, Themyscira, and it is, uh, it's the famous scene where she's got her foot on his head and asks him to yield. It's a, it's a famous scene in comics. It's unbelievable. She's got to protect this woman because she made a vow to protect her, and Batman's after her because he considers her a lawbreaker. And that's just one scene amongst many that has um, Princess Diana as Themyscira's representative in the U.S. Um, and, and the world. And it is, uh, a Greg Rucka just has a real, real uh, excellent feel for Wonder Woman. And he also has, um, uh, he has her uh, blinded and doing battle in uh, this book, the second book. Uh, she is remarkable in this book. She's extremely powerful, independent, talented, uh, and a remarkable warrior in book two. Greg Rucka has a, a very good uh, feel for her. And a couple books that I don't have with me that I meant to grab 
are her Rebirth books, the oversized hardcovers, volumes one and two, also by Greg Rucka. Those are Rebirth books, and those are great books that you don't have to have any prior knowledge of. Um, you just need to um, get them because they are great. And an earlier run uh, with a guy that not only wrote it, but drew it, um, and he did um, a run that is considered a fan favorite, and that is Three Omnibus Run by George Perez. And he is not only a wonderful artist and writer, but he's a wonderful guy. Anybody that's met him considers themselves blessed. Not only can he draw well, but he's also a great writer. He also has a great feel for Wonder Woman, more in the goddess sense uh, and not in the personal sense that Greg Rucka has, more the street-level sense of Wonder Woman. But Gre George Perez has her uh, as more of a kind of a goddess versus mortals, which is fine. You need both. Um, and, of course, he does the great artwork. And this is also an excellent book that you could have in your collection. Um, he does a wonderful job with Wonder Woman. There's three books. Try one book out and see if you want to get the other two. Um, he does uh, great work with Wonder Woman. And so we will stop with the top three there. And... We will continue with part two in just a moment. In just a moment for me, but it'll be a couple of days for you. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button. Please leave a comment. I always respond to all comments. Please subscribe. And of course, peace and love, peace and love. Thank you.